All right. Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing today? As per usual, I'm your host, Richie T, also known as Richard T, coming at you live today with uh, a format I haven't streamed any of and actually haven't played in a long time, even though I, th it's one of the most fun formats in my opinion. And that format, of course, is Pauper. So this uh, co this weekend coming up, a local store near me called RIW Hobbies is actually having a Pauper 1K, and the professor from Tillerian Community College is actually going to be there. Now, originally I planned on attending this event, but I kind of luck-sacked into finding a third for the Open this weekend, so instead I'm going to be uh, going to West Philadelphia, born and raised. But I still want to stream some Pauper for you guys, as I built this deck in paper, and I really love this format, so I figured... Let's still stream some Pauper. So let's get into the deck. The deck is called Four Color Mono Black Pestilence. And I know the first thing you're going to ask. Richie, how can a deck be both four colors and mono black? Let me hit you with a little bit of knowledge. So the way the deck can be four color and mono black is it's mono black because of the mana base. The mana base is all snow covered swamps and then four barren more. That's it. 22 lands. No other colors in our mana base. So, what supports the mono black part of this deck? Well, we have four Defile as a removal spell. Probably one of the best removal spells in Pauper and one of the biggest rewards for playing a bunch of swamps in your deck. On top of that, we also have Pestilence. Really close second to Defile for being a really good payoff for playing a lot of swamps as it's really just one of the best board wipes and win conditions we have in the Pauper format. On top of that, we got three Thorn of the Black Rose. The Monarchy is... Probably the strongest thing in Pauper right now, as it just gives you such insane card advantage. This deck's really well at protecting the Monarch once you get it, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's also just a 4-mana 1-3 Death Touch, which isn't bad. We got 4 Sign and Blood, as I was mentioning, card advantage mm -hmm. is king in this format. Mm -hmm. And then we got 4 Pristine Talismans, as a little bit of extra ramp, but also helps mitigate the life loss from Sign and Blood and Pestilence. So now... Let's get into how this deck can be four color. The main's actually three with a fourth color in the sideboard, but we're playing four Glint Hawks, which is a one white, two, two, that when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you return an artifact to its owner's hand. And four Core Sky Fisher, which is a two mana, two, three flyer, that when it enters, return a permanent you control to its owner's hand. On top of that, we're playing a little bit of green for three copies of Weather the Storm, as just you can chain off spells mm -hmm. like Glint Hawks, Core Sky Fishers, and gain anywhere between like 12 to 9 to 15 mm -hmm. life with this card typically. Mm -hmm. And that's normally enough to offset the Pestilence uh, and make it to where it's not quite as balanced. But you're probably wondering how am I casting these white and green cards in my mono black mana base deck? Well, in Pauper. Some of the best, one of the best like cards in it, the format are cards that let you really skew your mana base, and those cards are prisf prophetic prism. I always want to call it prismatic prism for some reason, but uh, prophetic prism, which is a two mana artifact that draws a card when it enters the battlefield, and for one mana tapping it, you can add any mana of any color, so we can filter our swamp mana into any color to cast any of our spells off that. But recently with Modern Horizons, we've also gotten a pseudo one-mana version in Arkham's Astrolabe. So it's basically the same thing, except you need to play snow mana, hence why we're playing all the snow-covered swamps. And that's what allows us to really fix our mana base. So all eight of these creatures essentially say draw a card when you have one of these on the battlefield. And essentially our goal is to just try to grind out as much value as possible. In the sideboard, we got four copies of Duress for against the not-creature-heavy decks where we need to attack their hands to try to get our spells through. Four Relic of Progenitus for the Graveyard decks. Three Gorilla Shamans, <clears throat> which is actually where the fourth color comes in. And it's basically just ways to destroy our opponent's Arkham Astrolabes, uh, Prophetic Prisms, and maybe also like destroy Affinity. The fourth Weather the Storm for aggressive decks like Burn. And then three Guardian of the Guild Packs, which might seem kind of weird. Like, why would I play a four mana 2-3 with protection from monocolored? The reasoning is, is, one, there's a lot of monocolored in Pauper, but it's also a way to offset the having to sacrifice Pestilence. So, 
With this card in Pestilence, you essentially, it won't take damage because of being protection from mono-colored. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to keep your Pestilence around for the whole time. <clears throat> so now, before we hop into our games, as per usual, I want to hop over and shout out our sponsor, MomsBasementGames.TCGPlayerPro.com. They're the best place if you want to buy any singles for any format. If you need some snow-covered planes for Pauper, some basic islands for Legacy or Standard, same with planes, or some rat colonies for your tribal rats deck, Mom's Basement Games has you covered. On top of that, if you're watching on YouTube in the future, thank you. Check down in the description box below for all the links that I'm going to be talking about. But also try to tune in live to our Twitch sometimes. On top of that, everybody watching live on Twitch right now and watching on YouTube in the future, thank you. But try to give us a like on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Mom's Basement MTG. On top of that, everybody watching on Twitch right now, thank you guys. But you should also check out our YouTube channel at some point, where we have the best standard, modern, legacy, vintage, commander, and pauper content. <clears throat> on top of that, I would super appreciate it if you gave me a follow on Twitter. My Twitter is at RichardTMTG. I talk magic, League of Legends, memes, music, anything else you want to talk about. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I'm always willing to talk. If you're looking for a little more forms of social media to find us at, you can find Mom's Basement Games on Instagram at Mom's Basement Games, and you can find me on Instagram at RichieT2196. But alright, you guys are probably tired of hearing me talk, so how about we get into some pauper action? Wow, that uh that was really quick. We found an opponent. Hit our opponent with the GLHF. We won the die roll. We would love to be on the play. Okay. So this hand is a little slow, but we can make it work. We essentially are going to go Prism on 2, Glint Hawk, Prism on 3, and then we have Pestilence for the future. So we're going to keep. It's pretty hard to mulligan a hand where you have a Prism or a Astrolabe. Our opponent's trying to decide if they want a mulligan or not. So what are you guys up to this weekend? I, uh, As I said, I managed to luck my way into finding a third for Philadelphia this weekend. So I'm pretty excited for that. I'm going to be going to Philly. Uh, still undecided on what format I'm going to be playing. I'm either going to be in the modern seat or the legacy seat, I think. So still a little up in the air, but we'll get there. I'm teaming with... My good friends, Brandon Stuck and Gavin Kokenauer. So, it'll be a great time. We're uh, we're also going with our friends, Steve, uh, also known as Abe, uh, Sebastian Payne, and Michael Bearby. Looks like Affinity from our opponent, which our Pestilence should do a lot of work against. Will, uh, will I be seeing anyone in Philadelphia by chance? All right, we're going to go ahead and draw our card here. All right, we drew a Baron more. Probably not going to end up playing this land, probably just using it to cycle. Our opponent plays another seat, another Chromatic Star, and there's the Frog Mites. Here they come. Hide your children, hide your wives. It's the Frog Mites and a Mirror Enforcer. So our opponent kind of had the nut draw here. All right. One, two, and three. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to play an Astrolabe. Go ahead and draw a card. We're then going to play a Glint Hawk. And return said Astrolabe. And then replay said Astrolabe. And that's kind of what our deck's trying to do, just uh, gain a bunch of card advantage. Ooh, weather the storm. That'll, that'll soak up some damage for us. Alright, opponent. You've had a really good draw. We'd really like to draw like a Defile or something. Ooh. 
I think we're probably... Hmm. Oh, jeez. Yeah, this draw was nutty by our opponent. So, we take six. We go to... 14... Um, hmm. I'm trying to figure out how we can get out of this. I think it's going to involve getting pretty lucky and drawing a defile. So I think we're going to just block here. We just really need to be able to kill our opponent's stuff. Alright, if I sign in blood myself... 12, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. Need to find a removal spell here. Okay, we found a defile. So now we'll play this and pass. So we're going to go to 1 here. So uh, not quite sure what we can draw to get out of this. Really, uh, if we hit double defile, I think we might have been able to potentially stabilize. But twas not to be. I suppose we can cycle too. Alrighty. Down to one we go. Well. We can go with a prismatic prism. Draw a card. Cycle. And concede. Alright, so kind of a... Uh, kind of an unfortunate... Unfortunate turn of events there, but... That's the reason we play Gorilla Shaman is for this matchup. Although, it wouldn't have done... Well, it would have blown up our opponent's lands, actually. Hmm. Guardian doesn't seem very good here. As I feel like if we wipe their board with Pestilence, that'll probably be good enough. Relic doesn't seem great. Duress doesn't really seem all that worth it. And we got four more cards to cut. <coughs> I think we probably only want to bring in the monkeys. Maybe trim a thorn of the black rose. Maybe just take thorn out in general. Thorn's a pretty grindy card and we can't really grind against affinity. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and try this. Alright, first uh, first round of the league and we sideboard into even more colors. Alright, this hand is kind of a risky one in the fact that we don't have a way to make uh, other than black mana. But I think we're still going to keep this. And... We're going to just Swamp Pass. We want as many Swamps as we can for Defile, I think. Seal of the... Seal, seat of the Synod. I can speak, I promise. Does our opponent have a one-drop, or do they not? To one drop or not to one drop? That is thy question. For there is no mightier land than thou seat of thy synod. Hmm. 
Wonder, I uh, wonder what our opponent's thinking about here. All right, Astrolabe's a pretty solid draw. I think we're still just going to go ahead and sign in blood. We don't really have anything we want to play off the Astrolabe, and I just kind of want to draw some, draw as many cards as possible right away. Do they have, like, a counter spell in hand here? All right, perfect. Two Swamps was... You know, maybe not the best draws. Like, maybe one of these and then something else would have been good. But definitely not going to complain about drawing two uh, swamps here. Mm. That means we'll just get to cycle these Baron Moors. Interesting. Maybe our opponent kept a sketchy hand. They did tank on their hand for a little bit. Oh, nope. There's their land. Oh, I can't blow that one up with uh, Gorilla. Big sad. Alright, you got a 1-1 one -one opponent. And you got a Frogmite. Alright, well... We're going to go ahead and start with an Astrolabe here. And you let me down again. Oof. Alright. Well. Hmm. One, two, three, four. So they have a land they can play a mer dude. Yeah, I think we just go ahead and defile this right now. Icker Wellspring. Was not aware Affinity played that card. Yep. You're drawing all the cards too, opponent. Look at you. Look at life. I will take the one damage. And I will cycle a Baron more end of turn. Okay. All right, so we're going to filter into white, play a Glintock. Pick up our Astrolabe, play our Astrolabe, draw a card. And we'll cycle another Baron more. All right, so... We definitely found our lands that we didn't have in the opener, but we're doing just fine, I think. Hey, I was doing just fine before I met you. I drink too much and that's an issue, but I'm okay. Hey, until your Icar Wellspring, it was nice to meet it, but I hope I never see it again. I know it breaks its heart. Move to the city in a broke down car and four years no wellspring. Now you're looking pretty in the wellspring. I have no idea what I'm uh, singing about, by the way. Just uh, sometimes you gotta mmm bop if you know what I'm saying. Mmm bop. Mmm bop. Make red. Oh. Well, that one's going to be an issue. That uh that one might uh might be able to kill us pretty quickly. Well, we have successfully drawn a lot of swamps and a lot of pestilence, which 
I guess, is what our deck's named after, so. We're gonna go ahead and play Pestilence here. Man, it's crazy. It legitimately, our opponent's whole board can be sacrificed to the ATOG. We might just get flinged out of this game. Affinity is a very good deck in Pauper, that's for sure. Especially because they get to play all these lands and whatnot. The artifact lands are just so good. Well, we're going to go ahead and block the thing we have to. He's going to sack both. Really wants that card advantage. Or maybe I'm just getting like teamer battle raged out. Yeah, I think we're getting teamer battle raged here. Kind of unfortunate, but uh, our hand ended up getting pretty repetitive here. Drew, uh, drew a bunch of swamps and a bunch of pestilence. Interesting. So our opponent just wanted to draw cards. This is definitely one of those matchups where having, like, more removal in your deck definitely, like, would help. Kind of a nod towards, uh, just playing, like, the more traditional black-white pe uh, pestilence decks or even just mono-black. Back to us. Well, we need to, uh, find a creature, hopefully. Well, I suppose we pass. So I'm going to hit the F6 button to make my opponent think I don't have anything. Well, I think we're still dead, unfortunately. Yeah. Atog is messed up in the Affinity deck. So kind of a rough, uh, rough first match there. And uh, kind of one of the downsides to playing this deck is you do have a lot of synergies. And you do, like, draw a bunch of cards and you can go off, but... You do have a lot less removal for against, like, decks like the Affinity decks or against Elves, like, Pestilence is really good. But against Affinity, it's kind of awkward because their bodies are a lot bigger. Alright, we won the die roll. Hit our opponent with the GLHF again. And I would love to choose to be on the play. Yeah, that sounds really good. Stinks that we don't really have a one drop on one, but... Prism on two into Hawk Prism on three should do just fine. Or we could even go Talisman into Hawk Pickup Prism. Whichever we're feeling. Our opponent Mulligan down to six. We'll go Swamp Pass. Kind of 
a blue land from our opponent. We'll attempt our prism. And pass it on back. Hmm. Pestilence is an alright draw. I think we're going to try for the talisman. Then we'll filter into white and go for the hawk. And then we'll pick up the prism. And pass it on to you, opponent. Some kind of blue-white duck. Might be the Jeskai. Jeskai snow duck. Oh, it's this deck. Okay. Alright. Well. We're going to play Pristine Talisman. Then we'll play Prof Prophetic Prism. Then we'll attack our opponent for two. And we'll just defile on our turn. Because that card can do a lot of messed up things. Basically our opponent's deck just like tries to make spells cheap and just like pseudo storm off with things like that. We could Pestilence, but I really don't want to lose my Hawk next turn. Well, I think we can start by cycling. Filter into a white. Pick up the prism. Place that prism. Hit for two. We're going to go ahead and sign and blood ourselves. Two more lands, they say. It's potentially possible this deck only wants like 21 lands. But hitting land drops is pretty important with the deck. Alright. Our opponent seems to... Have whatever they're doing full engaged. Astrolabe. And what is it this turn? Or not this turn, but what is it with this mana? That would have been nice last turn. But I feel like our life total is not going to super matter here. So I could Pestilence away everything. If I become the Monarch, they can't really gain it. If we attack with one, no, I think we're going to start by becoming the monarch, get that going. It's weird that they don't have the crown on the actual emblem. I think we're just going to weather for six life here. I just don't really see a better time to cast it. Maybe we were supposed to hold it for our opponent's turn, actually. Their deck casts a lot of spells.
Yeah, I think that's actually what we were supposed to do, the more I'm thinking about it. I don't think it's super matters. This matchup doesn't seem like it'll come down to life totals. Opponent puts both on top. That's scary. Spooky scary. Skeletons. And they shiver down my spine. Snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Yeah, definitely should have waited on this weather, I think. Evoking Mole Drifter. Hmm. Oh, now they get to put the snap on top. That's really cool, actually. That land's actually really cool in this deck. I think we want to kill all but this of our opponents. So that way we can keep our pestilence. So we're going to swing in with the squad. Pestilence. Hey, what's up, Jeremy? Glad to see you in chat, man. Our opponent's in the think tank here with that last trigger on the stack. Ops to do nothing. Hmm. Yeah, then I think we're going to play the hawk. And pick up prism. Then actually we're going to do this one more time. Show me what you got. Interesting. Maybe they just plan to snap our giant hawk, our, our glint hawk now. Playing magic in general, or, or do you mean just magic or pauper? I know you normally work on Fridays, so you don't really get to play that much. Kind of stinks between uh, work and school. Our phone's probably going to snap the mole drifter back if I had to take a guess. Ah, ghostly flicker. Okay. I see what they're doing now.
So they essentially, with enough reducers, could draw like their whole deck. Oh, you missed streaming? Yeah, it, uh... I really enjoy it. It'd be cool to see you come back. I would definitely watch you stream. Go and play Prism. Defile is a solid draw. Play the Sky Fisher. Pick back up Prism. Attack for two. That's fine. We're going to then go ahead and play this Prism. And pass it back. Draw another card. So we're slowly grinding our opponent out. All right. Yeah, this is fine. Seems like a kind of weird play. Unless they're about to cast, like, a Weather the Storm. Ah... Man, our opponent's deck is sweet. I graduate in May, so hopefully I can come back. Yeah, Friday I have clinicals 7 to 3.30, then work 5 to 1. Ouch. Yeah, that's rough, man. You go ahead and pick up your whole graveyard. We might just be able to, like, pestilence our opponent out here shortly. Well, maybe not if they keep playing those. Alright, so end of turn here. I think we're going to just cycle this Baron more. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hmm. Oh, wait. Ten, two. Seven. Dang, we're like one off from being able to sign in blood kill our opponent. Alright, so we're going to hit him for two. And then if we one, two, three, four. Hmm. I just don't want to, like, lose next turn. Yeah, I think we're going to just sign in blood ourselves and try to draw some more removal. 
Well, we always have more draws. Pick up the tether. <clears throat> Pick up the prism. Still have three, but we wouldn't be able to kill these. Really weird game. How many of these our opponent plays typically? Suppose I should just have goldfish up since I don't super know pauper yet. Looks like this is kind of like our opponent's own brew. Uh, Goldfish doesn't really have a list exactly like this up yet. You got it. Is this the other one, I'm guessing? All right, is this an instant? It is. I suppose we should just do this now. We can burn them out next turn as long as they don't go off too hard. And I'm not super worried about the O4s, honestly. Maybe I do kill the O4s with this on the stack. Just so that way they can't gain more life. That on the stack, I'm gonna pestilence again. Meh. So you're just targeting the land at this point, which is fine. Why do you build me up, build me up, buttercup, baby? We can only put them to two, unfortunately, right now. 
but without a land, they can't cast that card again. Hmm. All right, what's our plan? I think we're going to Astrolabe. Filter into a white and a colorless. Pick back up Astrolabe. Astrolabe. Make a white. Glintalk. Pick back up Astrolabe. Astrolabe. Uh, we'll cycle Baron more. We'll cycle a Baron more. And we'll play a Pristine Talisman. And pass. So we have both the files up right now. We know our opponent has that one card that lets them return a bunch of creatures to their hand. Both copies targeting that wall. Yeah, I mean, if you really want to go to the windows and to the walls that much, opponent, you can. You got it. Now you try to ghostly flicker those. And I let it happen. And then whatever they target to... Oh, it just goes on top. That's right. They don't draw it right away. They target snap. That's fine, right? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, and then they draw it, duh. I'm dumb. Alright, we got there, though. Really grindy, really fun game. That, that That's like the... That's like the reason right there to play Pauper is games like that. So, alright. This card doesn't seem like it really does anything. It keeps our Pestilence around, but I don't think that's that big of a deal. We definitely don't want the extra weather. We may even trim another one. We've seen Astrolabe, but I don't think that we really want Gorilla Shaman for their deck. Duress doesn't really do a whole lot because they have that land. I think Relic's really just the card we want to bring in here. Hmm. This card seems really important against them because we do need to grind. Um, we probably can live with two Weather the Storms. We just kind of need one thing to help us keep our, li our life total ahead of theirs. Hmm. What are the other trims here? This matchup seems really hard to sideboard against. What do you think, uh, what do you think, chat? Hmm. Maybe we can, like, trim a thorn. Trim a talisman. 
and trim a sign in blood. Seems reasonable enough for me. Maybe we're supposed to trim a pestilence, but. So this hand really needs an astrolabe effect, but I don't think we're supposed to mulligan him with a sign in blood. Yep, you got your preordain. We didn't even see any can trips in game one. All right, there's our there's our uh, there's our prism. All right, we're gonna pass to our opponent on one here. Another preordain. Our opponent's digging. Who knows what their hand could be? What did they do with the last preordain? Put two on top. Well, relic solid here. But I think we can wait a turn on it. We're just going to prism here as I don't really want to have to move to hand size. Next turn we can play relic, hold up to file and relic if we need to. Opponent's got the stop. In the name of love. Mm -hmm. How important is it to get this down now? Versus setting up. I think I like setting up more. Our opponent seems pretty far off from killing us, and this gets us some pressure in play. Yep. Alright, so back to us. I think we're going to play our land. Attempt to defile this. Alrighty, opponent. Then we'll play Relic. Target our opponent. And bop them for two. Again, I want to hold up Relic. I think, I think there's a decent chance we could, like, that they could combo us if I don't. Alright, our opponent conceded to the Relic. So, uh, we are 1-1 in this Pauper League right now. Relic, uh, Relic might be more important than I thought. Alright, we won the die roll. Popper is popping. Popper is popping off today. I'll uh, I'll see myself out. All right, yet another great hand. Got our mana fixing. Got some card draw. Mm -hmm. Awkwardly enough, we are gonna play this Baron more here on turn one. Just stud. Uh, we have a curve otherwise, and it kind of involves all of our lands. So this might be. The mirror, or might just be a mono black control deck. More likely that our opponent's playing mono black, though. Uh, I think we're just gonna sign in blood ourselves. Just see some more cards. And pass it to the opponent. Next turn, we can pristine talisman and then try to set up. Uh, Thorn of the Black Rose. 
Because, you know, every rose has its thorn. Just like every night has its dawn. Pass to the opponent. Traditional Swamp this time. And Phyrexian, Hor Ra Phyrexian Rager. Okay. I think I like doing that more here. So we're going to Prism. Then we'll Sky Fisher. Pick up our Prism. Play our Swamp and pass it. I just don't want them to kill my creature and then get the monarchy. I really want to try to keep and hold on to the monarchy if possible. Try to organize our hand a little bit more here. Yep. And see if we played this now, now they would have the monarchy. So that would be no bueno. Sign and blood themselves, sure. What we're really looking for is like a defile here. Or another weather the storm. Oh, I didn't cycle this, darn it. We should be one card deeper into our deck. My bad, chat. Well, we're going to go ahead and play the Pestilence, and then I guess we're going to play the Baron more here. Oh no, we already played our land for turn. So just pass it on back to our opponent. Next turn we can kill their creature after playing Thorn. Keep our Pestilence around and keep the Monarchy for a while. Okay, deal. Uh, we'll sign and blood ourselves. Perfect. Then we'll play the thorn. Alright, opponent, you got it. I am still the monarch. Look at me. I am the monarch now. shaping up okay hopefully they don't have their own throne chittering rats alrighty end of turn here we'll cycle baron more so that way we can draw a fresh card ooh glint talk. So we're going to get to kind of storm off here. Would be even better with an astrolabe, of course, but can't beggars can't be choosers. Draw another card. Defile your rat. Little do you know, opponent, you were actually helping me all along. And cast a huge weather the storm. Alright, I'm at 33. Go ahead, opponent. While life total isn't super relevant in Pauper all the time, it uh It's really helpful with pestilence. Hmm. 
think we're just going to pass here. Set up to file next turn. If we can, we want to be able to... Kill our opponent with the Pestilence. Five. We're up to five with it. And we'll weather again. Should gain another nine life here. Play Pestilence and Pass. And we're going to go ahead and Pestilence four times. And then we'll do it two more times at the end step. We still have two more Pestilence in our deck, so. Start with the Sign and Blood on ourselves. Play Pristine Talisman. Oh, we gotta use this this time. Need it to be a Snow Mana. We can turn this one into a white and play a Glintalk. Pick up Astrolabe. Play Astrolabe. Play a Talisman. Filter into whatever. Play a, a Astrolabe. And then pass the turn to our opponent to draw for the, our monarchy. So as you see, us having the monarch for so long is uh, really what have put, has put us at such a good advantage. Gray merchant here from our opponent. All right, well, we have the defile if we need to. So we'll go ahead and pass. Our opponent is empty handed. We're still drawing extra cards each turn. We'll go ahead and defile that. What do you have, opponent? Hopefully it's not a creature. That's a spicy one. Haven't uh, haven't seen that one in mono black. That uh That's probably gonna win them the game, honestly. We're uh, we're gonna need something big here soon. Cycle Baron more. Well, we'll make it work, I suppose. There's Pestilence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, fourteen. Hmm. Chittering Rats 2, the Electric Boogaloo. Let's 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're getting close, chat. I think we still have another pestilence in our deck too, right? One pestilence, two pestilence, yeah. All right, we'll play pestilence and pass. Draw the swamp that we know is on top of our deck. Activate Pestilence twice upon it. Alright, we're gonna activate Pestilence a lot more than twice right now upon it. So, we're just trying to draw into our other copy of Pestilence, essentially. Popper is such a grindy format, and I love it. <clears throat> All right, you're at three, opponent. I think it's still correct to sign and blood ourselves. If we find Pestilence, we just get to kill him. Technically, I should have used an Astrolabe instead, because that's what I'm going to pick up. Cast said Astrolabe. Man, and this is only game one. Or no, this is uh, game two, I think. Or is this game one? I don't remember now. I think this is game one. Yeah, this is game one. You got it, opponent. Pick up the Astrolabe, play the Astrolabe. And then cast the Giant Weather the Storm. And press F6. Well, we have 14 cards in our deck and we're trying to draw another Pestilence, so. We shall see how this works. Oh, I shouldn't have F6'd there. Oh, that was bad. I should have defiled with it on the stack. Alright, well. We'll get to it eventually, right? if I'm supposed to hold this. Yeah. I think I'm supposed to hold it in case my opponent somehow finds the way to become the monarch finds a way to become the monarch. And then I really need to be able to take it back from them. Well, this time I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make the same mistake twice, opponent. Gain three life. There it is. And 
now we pestilence our opponent out. What a game. That uh, I've actually playtested this matchup, except my opponent didn't have the return the creatures from the graveyard card. And uh, it actually went pretty pretty similarly to that, actually. So Guardians seem great here since they're mono black. Uh, I like a lot of our stuff here. Gorilla Shaman doesn't seem good. Duress is okay. Maybe Duress is better than Relic. Because that card's their only like way to interact with the graveyard, I would assume. But Relic Cycles. Duress stops removal, though. Hmm. What do you think, chat? Would you rather have Duress or Relic in this matchup? I think we don't need the extra Weather the Storm. Hmm. What else is pretty medium here? Since we're boarding in so many fours, I really... And, like, our fours are really impactful, so I think we want the talismans. I think we need Weather the Storm in this matchup. But maybe we can trim another one. Because we only really need one to get ahead on life. Yeah, I think... I think... Relic is better. It's possible we like just don't even want both and we can just grind them out naturally. That's also a possibility. Like our deck is just super grindy. And I'll have a hard time winning through this. Alright, I can buy that. So what else do we not want? Um, hmm. I suppose we'll trim a talisman on the draw. Then probably just like trim a glint hawk. Yeah. We'll try trimming a land on the draw. Well, our land drops are really important in the control matchup. Yeah, we'll try this. Not 100% sure. It's an awkward matchup to sideboard for. Especially when they're playing that uh, death card. Yep, this hand's great, though. Couple removal spells. An astrolabe with a glint talk. Ooh. So they brought in Duress to try to hit our artifacts. Which is pretty bad for us because they're actually pretty important. So like now we need to try to draw into us draw into one of our seven other artifacts. Okay. That card will help us do it in the future. You build me up, build me up, buttercup, baby. Me down. All right. Well, it looks like we're on the uh, draw, go into Thorn of the Black Rose plan, unless our opponent plays something here. Nope. Looks like the draw, go into Thorn of the Black Rose plan. It's a uh, classic for Pauper. Draw, go until I become the monarch. Yep. Gats verdict is fine. Well, we have plenty of removal spells. Sign and blood from our opponent. They did miss a land drop, so there it is. 
All right, we're gonna go land, pristine talisman, and then pass. Be draw a card for being the monarch. Pestilence isn't bad. Not very good on an empty board, but good to have. Well, that one stinks. That's the one that stinks. Because that's the one we really can't do anything about. Yikes. Well, uh, this game's slipping away from us because now our opponent's the Monarch. And we're not able to, uh... This is the issue, the, one of the issues with this deck is sometimes you're just, like, stranded with some white cards in your deck that, uh, kind of just make you look silly. So... Some people mentioned maybe trying like some Ash Barons and then playing like one Plains, one uh, Snow Covered Plains, and it makes Pestilence worse and Defile worse. But like maybe it's it's probably just correct, but it stinks to not have the Baron Moors because they are really good. I suppose we haven't drawn a Baron more though, so it's tough to say if it would help. Because a Baron more would definitely be an Ash Barons if we drew it. Oh, we'll sign in blood ourselves. And second verse, same as the first. Alright, there we go. All right, we're we're online now. I would, in fact, like to pick up my prismatic prism and then, or prophetic prism, and then play it again. All right, so our opponent gets to be the monarch for one more turn, and then we're gonna get it back with our flyer, hopefully. Discards a card, haunt. The creature on this die is tart. Okay, sure. Uh, I'll just discard a swamp. We have plenty of lands. Oh. That's cute, opponent. And now you're going to cast a kill. Sp oh, no. That's, in that's interesting. I haven't seen that card uh, before in mono black. Uh, I guess we'll discard a defile here. Yep. So now I gotta discard two more cards. Wow. So for four mana, our opponent killed our creature and made us discard four cards. That card's really good, actually. I'm surprised it doesn't see more play. Uh, I guess they'll get our Pestilence and our land here. We need to be able to kill their creature, and we need to be able to draw out of it, so. Alright. Prism. Not quite what we wanted, but. Yeah, we're, we're just going to get buried by them being the monarch, most likely. We're hoping for, like, our own Throne of the Black Rose here. We have two more in our deck. Or the uh, Protection from Monocolored card. That one would also be pretty good here. Mm, yeah. I'll take getting my opponent to cast those. That 
is in fact what I asked for. Go ahead, opponent. So we're going to trade off the Monarch until I can draw something to kill their Thorn. Or, oh, they have Edict effects in their deck, actually. Huh. Maybe this card isn't that good, then. Maybe Relic is better. How does Relic work with Haunt? The spell is put into the graveyard after resolving Exile it. Haunting target. Huh. Yeah, I feel pretty dead. Guess we can try to grind him out with Pestilence still. Go ahead, opponent. As it's thorns just like every night has its dawn just like every stream is karaoke <laughs> yep Oh, we're going to Pestilence for five here. Yeah, I didn't think about Chainers, too, with uh, Relic. Relic actually just seems really good in this matchup. Keep losing life, opponent. My plan is to uh, hopefully pestilence, pestilence you out still. Well, that's not losing life, opponent, so could you stop? I would like to pick up my Prophetic Prism. Go ahead. Yeah, like our opponent's just so many cards ahead of us at this point. It's, uh, it's going to be hard to come back. Especially through all these gray merchants. Well, that's a start. Back on the uh, try to grind our opponent out with Pestilence plan. We can try to do it, and then if we have to, we can kill the Garys. We're definitely going to take two instead of taking four from these Revokers, though. Or not Revoker, Ragers. Bajuka Juka Bog. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Sure, draw a card opponent. I will do this one more time. Oh wait, I can do this. Hold on. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now I think I need to keep them for at least another turn. Of course, if I would have just went full hog, I would have won. But I was trying to play around if I didn't draw land for turn since I've had a bunch of lands. So we uh, we have our win con. Our opponent needs to be able to kill their own creatures. <clears throat> and it appears they cannot. So I'll say yes to this. Filter all of my colorless into black mana. Oh, wait. I'm at seven. Shoot. Well, I didn't think this plan through all the way. I was for some reason thinking I'd be at a higher life total. Well, I suppose we can do it for three. My brain just like, for some reason had it that I couldn't die to my own pestilence. That was funny. Awkward, but funny. Well, like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking there. Well, here we're definitely going to just uh, just do this and then hopefully gain enough life to eventually pestilence them out again. Alright, don't gary me. I feel like I'm getting garyed. All right, on to game three against the more traditional mono black control. So, they have a lot of edict effects, so I actually think this card's not good here. I think relic is probably better. But do we want the fourth relic of progenitus is the question. What do you think, chat? Do we want four relics? Do we want to submit three I think all of these cards are very good and somewhat needed. Hmm. This matchup seems very draw dependent to me. It is like a pseudo mirror, so that makes sense. Yeah, I think we're going to try three relics. I would like to be on the play. Um, 
I think we can do better. Oh yeah, this is way better. Keep, put a pestilence on bottom. So because we put a pestilence on bottom turn one, we can pretty much automatically just count it as there only being three pestilence in our deck. Because we, uh, we don't have any ways to, like, shuffle our deck. Which, the new mulligan rule, too, might actually change, like, how this deck's, uh, wanting to be built. Yep. Uh... Guess we'll discard this pestilence. We're gonna discard the land. I really wanna try to cast this thorn. It's like pretty impossible they don't have a removal spell, but we don't really need the land if they have a removal spell too. We'll go ahead and Sky Fisher, pick up Astrolabe, recast Astrolabe. That actually worked out kind of well because we can just discard the Thorn or... Or we can discard everything but the thorn. Oh. Well, that's good for us. <laughs> Dang. Really needed a land there. Alright, we'll attack for two. We'll Glint talk. Pick up the Astrolabe. Astrolabe. Wee. Uh, then we'll play a Relic of Progenitus. Guess the verdict. I will sacrifice this one. Yep. Alright, so our opponent is down to two cards in hand. gonna get all but one of our thorns oh mm. I'm bad with relic of progenitus apparently even though I've played that card forever in modern we're gonna just do it now so I don't forget go ahead opponent sign and blood themselves Oh, weird. They actually got rid of the, uh... The chainers there. Well, I know I wanted this card, but I really want to land. Perfect. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have a removal spell in the last three cards of their hand, but... We really need to go to try to get this down and start cooping some card advantage. Okay, Chittering Rats is not... Uh, uh, one, two, three. It, it doesn't matter, actually. So we'll be trading the monarchy. But I think I'm fine with that. If I draw a land to file, it's just the nut. So we'll go ahead and pass. They lose a creature though to become the monarch. Which is obviously like a trade they're willing to make. Wow, 
another Chittering Rats. Yep, you drew him this game, opponent. So, unfortunately, we don't have the Defile to uh, really get him here. Wow. Literally the best card possible off the top for them. Hey, hey, feels bad, man. Clap. Keep drawing cards, I guess. Our opponent can't block flying. So they have to kill both of our creatures. Okay. So you... Please don't draw an instant speed removal spell off of this. We're going to be smart and start by going to combat. Awesome. We will then cast an Astrolabe. Uh, we will then cast a Prophetic Prism. And we will then cast a Relic of Progenitus. Uh, we will relic them. We'll go to our end step, draw a card. Pass it back to them again. Here we're going to crack relic to try to draw. Yes! Exactly that. That was what we were trying to draw. Oh. Really wanted you to not become the fucking monarch opponent. Well. One good play deserves another, I suppose. I'm not going to play this land because I want to keep my opponent guessing for this turn. Trade the Death Touchers. They don't play any haste threats, so I'm pretty free to attack for two here. Draw our extra card. Sign and blood themselves. Man, this matchup is so, so back and forth. Man, they really have to think with what they draw, they drew. That's probably not good for us. Sure. Sure. Good thing that was one button, not two. Mm. 
God, you're so good at this game for playing that stupid card. It's probably a one-of in their deck, too. Yep. tried so hard. The card is so dumb. I've literally never seen a list of their deck playing it. It seems really good though. Like it's just an insane top end card. And, like, their deck wants to go to the super late game. Our opponent's realistically going to win by timing us out. We're going to win by drawing Pestilence. <laughs> Stupid hiccups. opponent. Take four opponent. You're getting some nice clickings in though. My god, that wasn't their main phase. Wait, that's fine for me. That's actually good for me. Weird. I wonder why our opponent played another creature. Like, I'm pretty sure if my opponent just, like, let me sack the Pestilence, they win. 10, 11. I think I screwed up, and I think my opponent actually targeted me there. I wish if I F6'd with mana, that it didn't make me re-say that I actually want to F6. Yep. Only gonna win.
The monarchy is so dumb. I think it's like probably too powerful of a mechanic for Pauper if we're being honest. What? I want to use my fucking snowman computer. Stupid moto. Like, oh, I floated a mana. Do you, how do you want to pay for this? With, with the fucking floating mana, of course. Now I want to pay for this with uh, my untapped lands. I was just floating that because it looked pretty. Digging, digging, digging. Just keep on digging, digging. Now we're behind Pestilence. This is a super close matchup, it feels like, though. Take three down to seven. Really just, uh, just seems like it depends on who gets the monarchy. Prism. Sign blood myself. Cycle Baron more. Yeah, I think... I think... Oh, I'm an idiot. I am not an idiot, because I would have been dead. I'm probably still an idiot, but that's besides the point. Uh... Yep. You got it. trying <laughs> pauper aka the grindiest magic the gathering format Yes, you have bogged me successfully, opponent. Well. Can't lose if I don't die, right? JK, this is Moto. I literally have one land left in my deck. I've somehow managed to draw legitimately all but one land. Oh, I guess I only have four cards left in my deck. Dang, I did not realize that uh, we've actually gone that deep. Cycle the last Baron more. And we're dead. Hit our opponent with the GG's. Those were great games. That was actually a really great game, honestly. That uh, that really shown what Pauper is. Just such a grindy format. Um. Yeah. Maybe I really like Pestilence and I think it's a really cool card. I think this like the way this deck is designed is really cool. 
but it might, like, if you're trying to be competitive with Pauper, it might just be worse than, like, either the traditional black-white pot or uh, pestilence decks, where, like, you don't have to play, like, the Weather, the Storms, the Prophetic Prisms, or the Astrolabe. Or it might even just be, like, a worse just straight mono-black control. Like, it's trying to be a hybrid of two different decks that... I, and, and I think it's just, like... I think it works. Like, I think this deck actually, like... I think it's a deck. Like, I don't think the deck is, like... I think the deck is playable. And the deck's really fun. But... If you're trying to be competitive with Pauper... I think I would lean towards one of those other two options as... This deck just really lacks removal. Because it... It's trying to be so cute that it forgets that it needs to also interact with its opponent, it feels like. Like, you have the Weather the Storms, but, like, Defile and Pestilence are your only removal. So, I feel like this deck might want a little bit extra removal, like... And even if, like, you're gonna play this, maybe you just put, like, some Chainer's Edicts in the deck and then run it back. So, like, maybe you trim a Thorn... Trim one of the weather, the storms. Maybe put the other weather in the side over, like, a duress or something. I just feel like this deck needs a little extra... little extra to help against... Against crit critters and stuff. This hand is super sad. If we had, like, another land, or if we had a... Instead of a, one of these two prisms, we had an astrolabe. This hand was, like, a snap keep. But with the way it is now, I think we have to mulligan, unfortunately. Alright, we mulliganed into a pretty good hand, though. Put a defile on bottom. Oh, wow. Oh, this is tortured existence. So this is basically, like, the dredge of Pauper. It actually plays dredge cards for the matter. Viscera Seer. Uh, I'm actually going to defile that with that on the stack. Just so they can't get their scry on. I hear your heart beat to the beat of the drum. Oh, what a shame that you came here with someone. And now you're here on my own. Let's make the most of the night like we're gonna die young. Another Viscera Seer from our opponent. And we draw a Talisman. Alright, well. We'll get our ramp on. Filter into a white. Play Glint Talk here. Why, yes, I would like to pick up my Prophetic Prism. And then pass the turn back to the opponent. Wonder what they can have for one green that they're paused for. Okay, interesting. They kept their card on top, so whatever it is, it's uh, what they wanted. Might have been another land. Discard the dredger to pick back it, pick it back up. Makes a lot of sense. And they keep the card on top again. Well, hmm. I think we're going to just Prism for now, as it's basically the same thing as Thorning, just less likely our opponent gets the Monarchy. Uh, and then we'll Core Sky Fisher and pick 
prism back up. Yep. When it enters the battlefield, target player discards two cards. Why does everyone like to make us discard? It's so rude. Guess we'll discard Pestilence and this Defile. Sure. Hmm. That's one I haven't actually seen in that deck. So I think we're going to get our Monarchy on here. We don't have anything else we can play this turn. So even though it does risk our opponent being able to take it in a couple turns, potentially. I... And we don't get to hit our land. Well, we would have hit our land for the turn, but... Eh. We wouldn't have done much with it, so... opponent's going to be a jerk and not let us have our talismans. That's rude. And it's uh, pretty rude because he's going to be taking us off our colors like every turn. Well. If we draw two, we get to have it for at least another turn. Go ahead and five our opponent. They do have to uh, eventually do stuff to not die to us, so. Play Pristine Talisman. We'll just go ahead and weather the storm right now. It's pretty unlikely we'll get to gain more than six. Go ahead and five our opponent here. They decide to dredge this time. whenever it's put into your hand from your graveyard. So now they got the engine online, huh? Alright, we're going to go ahead and cycle. Go ahead and Glint Talk. Pick up the Prism. Play the Prism. Play the Glint Talk. <laughs> Pick up the Prism. And play the Prism. Go into combat. Smack our opponent for five. And draw a card. So we've put up a mighty bird of uh, tiny creatures here. Mighty bird of tiny creatures. Ah. Made a pun and didn't even mean to. Mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. 
Cycle Horror of the Broken Lands. They drew a land for turn. And our opponent's trying to figure out what they can do to get out of this. Currently, if they get back Bronze Scale, they're not dead. They do know that. But what they don't know is I have a Pestilence in my hand that will drain them for three. So I think we still might not be able to kill them. They're going to cast Stink Weedon. That's fine. Well, then instead of drawing a card, we will defile Stinkweed Imp. Play our land, go to combat. Yep, you will gain two. And then you're still going to be dead opponent. And we will activate Pestilence. Alright, so we're up a game against Green-Black. This is definitely a Relic matchup. Guardian's interesting because it's a way to grind with Pestilence. Don't think we need four Weathers. This is another matchup where, like, having actual white mana on our deck would be pretty important, I think. So I think people, I think, uh, the person who suggested making these Ash Barons and then making one of these, one of the Swamps of Plains might actually be correct. Gorilla Shaman doesn't seem very great. Duress doesn't seem very great. Relic. Relic seems great. I think we're going to generally have more life than them so we can trim a weather the storm. We can trim a talisman. We can probably trim a defile, but I think we want some removal. We can probably trim up Pestilence, honestly. Trim a Thorn. We're just going to kind of trim a lot of places, I think, for this matchup. Because we want to have access to pretty much everything here. Maybe this card's not great. Yeah, the, this card actually seems worse than just like this. Being the Monarch seems pretty important in this match. Can also see making us a little lighter on white mana. Just, uh... Just try to make us a little leaner against this deck. Can even see doing this, actually. Just uh, using the incidental life gain off like Talisman. Then we have less uh, less dead cards in our deck. Since our opponent is trying to blow up our prisms. The sad thing is if you put a, uh, no, we're not playing Hearthstone, so this is an easy mulligan. If you put a Plains into this deck, you can no longer call it Mono Black, so it's just going to be four color Pestilence. Uh, yeah, I think we got to keep this. And we'll send 
Uh, probably the Baron more to the bottom. I think we have enough to do with this hand. Tap land from our opponent and passes back to us. We will play a Relic of Progenitus and pass back to them. Well, that's sad. Just had the Natty turn to, or turn, uh, oh, but they don't have a land drop. Okay. Seems like they kept a risky one. Ah, okay. They did have the land, but it was a slow land because of Ash Barons. Got it. Well, I would like you to exile a card from your graveyard opponent. Not sure if they, there's anything in Pauper that lets you pick up lands, but no reason to let our opponent have it anyways. I think we're going to do this instead of playing the Talisman. If we hit a... Uh, the minus X minus X. Defile. We, uh, we would have been in business there. The Relic is like going to take our opponent off like three turns though. So that's fine by me. I would like you to exile a card from your graveyard. I will then draw a card. And you have resolved a Bajuka Bog opponent. Bajuka Juka Bog. Mm. Kind of just want to get my card draw on here. Get the monarchy going. Alright. Golgari rat farm from our opponent. Floating a black in response. Wonder what you got here, opponent. What you, what you, what you got, what you got. Commune with the gods. Two. Oof. They just completely whiffed off commune. That's pretty unlucky for them. So land. One, two, three. We get a talisman down. And we'll get another talisman down. I could have like prismed and core sky fishered, but I kind of wanted to get my mana online. Four mana from our opponent. Crypt Rats. Alright. Basically they're Pestilence. Let's make the most of the night like we're gonna die young. Alright, here we're gonna start with a Prism. Go to combat. Uh, we're actually not going to attack. So originally I was going to attack, but I just don't like want to give my opponent the chance to... Ooh, that's not bad. To have a removal spell and take the monarchy back. Or take the monarchy in general. 
Astrolabe. And then we're going to play a relic and relic our opponent. And pass it to you, opponent. Keep the card advantage of the monarchy going. Four mana. Crypt for three. Yep, not much I can do about that. Uh, no real point to pop the relic here. Let's just go ahead and draw. Relic our opponent. Play the Sky Fisher. Pick up the Astrolabe. Play the Astrolabe. Pick up said Astrolabe. Rinse and repeat. We're just drawing so many cards, Chad. It's great. Isn't this just all you want to do with your life? Doesn't everybody just love drawing all of the cards? It's really just a magical time, honestly. Like, I cast so many spells, and I'm still just at seven cards in my hand. So we're going to have to time our relic pretty, pretty carefully. If this is my opponent getting back Crypt Rats, I really don't care. What's that? Hmm. That's interesting. You don't get a chance to respond to Madness. Yeah, I mean, I still don't really care about him picking up Crypt Rats, honestly. You got a Stinkweed Imp opponent. That works. All right, well. Yeah, we're going to start with the sword thing. Relic target you. Then we will... Actually, I don't think we want to do that. I think that's what we want to do. Oh wow, did it really filter a black into a black? Whatever. Attack for two. Uh, 
What I'm trying to do here is I'm just going to try to set up to burn my opponent out. Because eventually they're not going to be able to crypt rats enough. Yep. See, this is actually a mind game right now. I floated all my mana to try to get my opponent to use their Crypt Rat. Deal. Good games, opponent. This deck's really good at grinding your opponent out because Pestilence just, like, is the best payoff for grinding. Alright, so we're 2-2 going into the last round to hopefully be able to pay, play for prizing. Um, like I said, this deck is definitely good and the shell is solid. It's just making it a little extra consistent, maybe. And also adding a couple removal spells, I think. And I'm not sure, maybe... I'm actually uh, playing against someone that I know IRL. Uh, Michael, if you're... Wa I, I would hope you're not watching now. But uh, if you watch in the future, hello... Just some playful banter. He's saying that uh, it's a good thing he's not in. He's not watching my stream, and I tell him that there's no ghosts allowed in my house. Ah. He told me boo, so I had to. I had to go ah. Uh, that's how this works, right? All right, so we're gonna Glen talk, pick up our astrolabe, and replay it. All right, slowly grinding them out. Opponent's gonna cycle a Baron more. Looks like more traditional mono black control if I had to take a guess, which is what we had picked up a loss to earlier, but hopefully we can change that streak here. Ooh, Dusk Legion Zealot. That's probably just a better uh, Phyrexian Rager. Alright, we'll sign and blood ourselves here. Use a colorless to make white. Pick up the astrolabe and replay it. Just got all the card advantage up in here. This card advantage gonna make you lose your mind up in here, up in here. Snuff out. That's a that's a spicy one. I actually kind of like that. Maybe that's something to consider for this deck. Chittering rats is no fun. I like to draw cards, not put them on top of my deck. Alright. We're going to 
prism. And we're going to pick it up. Play the astrolabe again. filter into a white to pick the astrolabe back up. Alright, your move. Had to ask if this is what he's playing on Sun or Saturday. Yep. Hmm. We'll take this hit. We have the defile in our hand for it, so. Alright, we're gonna go to combat. So, we have two extra mana, one, and then two. So I think we're going to Astrolabe first. Really should have done that before combat. So we're going to attack for two. Play the Astrolabe. Then we'll go ahead and play a Pestilence. And we're going to hold off on activating it, I think. Uh, no, we're going to do it now. Just in case our opponent has a removal spell of some sorts. Opponents uh, wishing me luck in Philly. Told them that they better win the 1K for me. Really funny that I end up getting paired against someone that I know. Oubliette. Yep, that's going to resolve. Then we'll take our smack for two here. And Pestilence, end of turn. Ooh. Alright, we're going to play Thorn. We're going to become the Monarch. Opponent's probably debating if they kill it on the stack or not. Chooses not to. Alright, back to them. That's funny that that wouldn't show. I typed LMAO and it just came up as uh, a bunch of blurbs. Opponents digging. Alright, and we get this game. So like I said before, the uh, the monarchy really really shows what what wins this matchup a lot.
All right, so in the dark here, I don't think we want Gorilla Shamans or Relics. I can see Merit for Duress still. I think we can trim a wet. We can probably trim two weathers. Again, I think the incidental life gain is how how we'll take advantage in this matchup. I think the duresses are probably too cute. Hmm. Yeah, so like here, if we had the Ash Barons, I wanted to try the list I seen first off like Moto or off MTG Goldfish. That uh, that's the reasoning why we're not playing the the Ash Barons and Planes. Someone did suggest it to me, but I thought I'd just try the the list that I seen. Uh, really, really trying to figure out what to trim here. I think we can probably trim a Glint Hawk, and then probably just a Talisman since we're on the draw. Wanna wanna look up what a card is. I know it starts with a D. Sorry for the riveting content here. I uh, just want to see if it's like a common thing that sees play. Death denied. Not the best hand in the world, but I think it's one that we can't really mulligan. Might be a DC or it might even be him typing actually. It's probably just him typing. We're just going to keep playing our lands and passing. We might defile this if they don't, if he doesn't play anything else this turn. Plays another one. The words of DJ Khaled, another one. So... I actually think we're going to take this because I would rather say it for I would rather save it for a better creature and with the talisman I can defile plus thorn next turn. Mm. 
We'll put one of these pestilence on top. Alright, we'll take two here. Then we'll pestilence those away this turn. So I'm just trying to set up for a good thorn turn. Because once I play it, I really don't want to lose the monarchy. I know this is a grindy matchup, but I'm also enjoying just like, this is like basically like just playing at my LGS. So I enjoy having like a communication. All right, we're gonna Pestilence for one here. Then we'll go ahead and take our two. Okay, so this works out pretty, pretty okay for us. So we thorn here, take the monarchy back. Or take the monarchy, I guess we never had it in the first place, but it's ours now. Well, that's kind of unfortunate. Hmm. Is it worth defiling to save two life? I don't... Is it? Hmm. So we go to 15. Um, if we talisman into that. Uh, yeah, I think I just want to get the creature off the board. So that'll throw the pestilence math in our favor. Baron more for land for turn. So we'll talisman. I think we're just going to cycle this. Well, we hit a land anyway, so it's basically the same thing. What we were really hoping to hit there was a astrolabe or a uh either an astrolabe or oh crap i can't think of its name astrolabe or a uh, prism there we go Here, we'll drain them for two and kill their dude. So we're on the slow grind right now. Another swamp for turn and we'll pass. The fact that he's had the monarchy for so long is terrifying. We'll take this one. I'm 
another rat. Now that's just rude. How rude. We'll pass it back. We have them dead next turn, actually. So, uh, the Pestilence Drain Plan is, uh, is in full effect. Ooh, that's a... It's a neat card to get to play in Mono Black. That whole land cycle was really good, in my opinion. A lot of people like to crap on it, but I think it's better than a lot of people give credit to. Well. We're going to Pestilence three times. Fair play. So, uh, we're kind of losing this game due to the fact that we just haven't drawn white a white source, which is pretty unfortunate. Here's a pestilence. Go ahead. I'm going to need you to not do that. Same as the first. And the old pestilence off the top. He told me I was the rude one. I said it was him. He said GG's. I told him same to you. Fun games. Alright, so we uh we managed to 3-2 the old pauper league. So got our money back, got a chest for our uh for our troubles. Um Thoughts on the deck? I really like this deck. It's a lot of fun, and I think that there's a lot of synergy packed into it. Uh, Pestilence is a sweet card. Um, and I think having the life gain package is good with it. Uh, if I were to play this deck again, the Baron Moors were super good. But I honestly think, like, being able to get a white source without artifacts is probably more important. I would at least try Ash Barons and putting a Plains in the deck. And then if I didn't like it, I can always change it back. Um, I don't really think that there's... There's maybe a way you can, like, cut the green and red and just play, like, a more swamp-heavy version of the white deck. 
but I don't know if I I don't know if I would like it, and I don't know if it would work as well. Like at that point, you may as well just play the black white smallpox deck, and maybe maybe that's just like a better version of this deck. But I really I really like what this deck gives. I like the Glint Hawk Core Skyfisher Prismat or Prophetic Prism Arkham's Astrolabe package as your threats. I like being more proactive than interactive. I guess it is. I guess is what it is. But if I were to play this deck again. I do think I would trim. I'm not really sure. I want I want a couple more removal spells in this deck. I think maybe that's the thing. This list is really tight. I think I'd go down a land and maybe I, I think it'd be a land and a weather the storm. So I'd only play two weathers in the main because this card isn't always needed. Like, you gain a lot of life off, like, your pristine talismans, too. So I think I'd go down this and add in probably two Chainer's Edicts. And try that. And then in the sideboard, I would trim a Duress and play the fourth Weather the Storm still. I think that's where I'd go moving forward with this deck. Uh, like I said, I would try the Plains and the Ash Barrens. Uh, maybe even at that point. You don't need all eight of these, but they're still just draw cards, so they're probably fine. <laughs> Calling me the rude one. I, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Pestilence is a, uh, fair and balanced Magic the Gathering card. Good games, though, man. They were a lot of fun, honestly. I always enjoy, uh, it always stinks to, like, get paired against your friends, but it honestly makes Moto a lot more enjoyable. Like, just being able to interact with people and not, like, feel weird. But, yeah. So, those are those are the changes I'd make to the deck moving forward. Uh, if you want to... If someone wants to play this... Shh. Look. We play four for a reason. It's that way we can draw them. We also name our deck Pestilence. Because we want to draw Pestilence. So it knows. That's the big brain plays. Like, uh, you could change Mono Black Control to Mono Black Thorn of the Black Rose. And then maybe you draw more Thorn of the Black Roses. Think about it. Yes! Four rats is very rude! Do you know how many turns I just had to draw the same card over and over again? I just kept putting Pestilence on top. But, as per usual, at the end of the stream, I want to hop back over to our sponsor, MomsBasementGames.TCGPlayerPro.com, and tell you guys to make sure to check out their store and buy Magic the Gathering cards from it. If you're looking for any singles, maybe for four-color mono black pestilence, for example, I would recommend coming to Mom's Basement Games for it. I'm sure we will have the best prices on whatever you need. For everyone watching on YouTube in the future, check down that description box below for everything that I'm going to be talking about, but also try to tune in live on the Twitch sometimes. It's a lot of fun. Ask Michael. On top of that, everybody watching live on Twitch right now and watching on YouTube in the future, hop over to our Facebook page, give us a like, follow us on Twitter at MomsBasementMTG, and for everybody watching live on Twitch right now, check out our YouTube channel in the future. We have the best standard, modern, legacy, vintage, commander, and pauper content on there. Kapow! You should uh, kapow right on the way to my Twitter and give me a follow on Twitter. At Richard T. M. T. G. I talk magic, league, memes, t uh, music, TFT, anything else you want to talk about. Hit me up on Twitter. We can always talk. If you're looking for any other forms of social media, you can find Mom's Basement Games on Instagram at Mom's Basement Games. And you can find me on Instagram at RichieT2196. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and get me some food as per usual after stream because uh, your boy gets hungry. Have a great night and weekend, everyone.